Mr. President, honorable representatives, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be here with you to discuss the situation in my country. Iran has recently witnessed a popular uprising. Protests took place in 142 cities all across the country. The protesters were deprived people, but their demands focused on regime change. I have come here today to be the voice of those protesters who are presently in prison and under torture. It was wrongly taught in the past years that the working class and low income masses form the regime's base. Protesters have put an end to this notion. Iran is a rich country where 70% of its working population lives under the poverty line. Factory workers around the country have gone unpaid for months. Instead, the regime spends huge oil revenues and unfrozen assets after the nuclear deal on wars and destruction in the region. The mullahs have taken advantage of the nuclear deal to step up human rights abuses in Iran and fuel wars in the region. One of the most popular slogans chanted by protesters was, leave Syria, think of us. The protests that began over high prices quickly turned into political demands. The Iranian people know well that as long as this regime is in power, they will continue to suffer. The country's wealth is in the hands of a few. The wealth of Khomeini alone has been estimated at more than $95 billion. The message of the Iranian people's uprising is very loud and clear. The time has come for regime change in Iran. Let me be clear. Regime change in Iran is the responsibility of the Iranian people and the Iranian resistance. And no one else. We reject both foreign intervention and appeasement. The recent protests have shown that the people of Iran want fundamental change. They want a, a true republic and elected government that people freely choose and vote. It was proved that the Iranian people reject both factions of the regime. They shouted down to Rouhani, down to Khamenei. They stressed that the game of moderates and hardliners was over. The protests that shocked the regime also demonstrated that the regime is more fragile and vulnerable than ever before. Honorable representatives, allow me to draw your attention to the situation of human rights in Iran, particularly since the beginning of protests. During the protest, 50 of the protesters were killed. I have the photo here. Uh, some in the streets and some in uh, custody and under torture. This person <coughs> were killed under torture. However, unfortunately, Europe remains silent. I have not heard of any European government protesting the regime over the killing of protesters under torture. Why? Uh, over 8,000 people have been detained um, for using their <coughs> legitimate right to protest. Where is the outrage expected to be seen in Europe? Where are the 
defenders of human rights to raise their voice in support of those suffering in Iranian prisons. I have come here today to ask you to be the voice of those detainees who are being tortured to death. I urge your group and the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe to strongly condemn the killing of protesters in prisons and to urge all governments in Europe to take practical measures for the release of the prisoners. Demand your governments to condition their relations with the regime uh, on the release of the detainees and other political prisoners. I also ask you to urge the High Commissioner of Human Rights to form an inquiry committee to investigate and the deaths of protesters in detention. Ask your governments to stand with the Iranian people in the just and legitimate struggle for a free Iran. There are my immediate demands as well as our compatriots. Immediate release of uh, the prisoners of the uprising. Freedom of expression and assembly. No more repression of women and no more compulsory veil. Now and just today, after 39 years, enough is enough. Let me also add that Iran's people are determined to put an end to this theocratic regime and establish freedom. We seek a pluralist and elected system of government, a republic based on separation uh, of gender and state, gender equality, and we want an end to all discrimination against ethnic and religious minorities and recognition of their equal rights. Uh, we wish to live in peace and friendship with our neighbors and the whole world. I thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.